Hi everyone, this is Anne with Graphic Design How To, and today we're going to talk about the Warp, Twirl, Pucker, and Bloat tools. And those are right underneath the Width tool over in your toolbar. So we're going to start out with the Warp tool at first. And to do this, I'm going to go ahead and draw a few different types of objects. So I'm going to hit M on my keyboard and draw a rectangle. And we'll make this red. I'm going to hold Shift and Option and drag a copy below. And I'm going to hit just Command D. And Command D duplicates what you've just done. So it'll make a copy and move it a little bit down. And now I'm just going to grab a few colors here in my swatches palette. I'm going to take all of these colors and group them. I don't know that it really matters, but it might help a little bit to keep them all together. We're also going to draw a line. So I'm just hitting P to get the pen tool. Click once, hold shift, then I'm going to hit D to give me a white fill and a black stroke. And finally, I'm going to type hello. So we can see how this uh, functions with type also. And we'll change this to something a little more interesting. So now I want to show you what this warp tool does. When we click on it and just go over it like this, nothing happens at all. And that's because this is not selected. So we have to first select it. I'll hit V on my keyboard and that'll give us our selection tool. I'll select all of that and then I'll hit the warp tool and then we can kind of go over the edges of this. And you can see this has quite a lot of warping going on. We can make this warp less also by just double clicking and changing some of our options here. Right now the width of the brush itself is pretty big so I'm going to change this to 30 and we'll change the height to 32. Um, we can also use the pressure of my Wacom tablet. If you don't have Wacom tablet, you won't even be able to choose this. Um, but you can adjust the intensity here. So we'll put that at 30. We'll increase the detail and decrease simplify. And let's see what happens now. So we have a much smaller brush and it's not moving things very much but it's giving us a lot more detail in our curves and a lot more bumpiness too. So um, I'm going to undo, get us back to where we were. So now if we do the warp tool across the straight lines, you can see it's just barely giving us a little bit of warp wherever that crossed. This is sort of an easy way to roughen up some of your edges if you're looking for that rougher texture. All right, let's try it on the line. As long as the line is selected with your V tool, this will work. So we'll just come in here and roughen up that line a little bit. And finally, I've got live text here. Let's try the warp now. If you try it on live text, you will see this error message, which says the selected artwork contains text. So you have to convert to outlines if you want to use warp on text. So we'll say, okay. And now we'll hit shift command O to create outlines. So this means you cannot type in here anymore. It is not live type. So I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit. So now if I warp this, you can see that you can get some kind of interesting effects and really change that font. This could be helpful if you're trying to go for like more of a whimsical style. All right, let's back up. I'm going to go back to our original shapes. And now let's switch over to the twirl tool. Now this one is pretty cool. I'm going to double click and knock this back up to 100. And we'll put the twirl rate a little higher. Detail and simplify up. So now if I just touch on this, it'll start twirling all these things together. And it's really actually kind of hard to control how much twirl you get. So if you're really trying to go for something specific, these tools probably aren't your best bet. But if you want something that's kind of randomized, these really work well. So we'll try the line now. If I click and hold, we just get this. And that's kind of a cool effect. Now we'll go in and reduce the size of our brush to 20. And then click right in here. Get a little bitty spiral in there. So I think these could be really interesting in the design, especially like a background or pattern design. And now let's work with the hello. I'm going to do shift command O because it was live text before. So let's do the twirl tool on this. I'm just going to barely tap everything. And you can see that it really wants to twirl it a lot. That's very Dr. Seuss looking. Now we can also change the intensity of our twirl. Let's knock it down to two and see what happens. 
twirl rate. We can put it down way down. Let's see what happens now. Okay, it's taking quite a lot longer to twirl everything. So if you knock that amount down, you have a little more time to tweak it. Otherwise, it, it twirls everything so fast that it's hard to control it. Okay, so that is the twirl tool. I'm going to back up again and we'll start over. And now let's use the pucker tool. I'm going to command minus to zoom out and I'll click right in the middle here. And it doesn't appear that a lot is happening and that's because our intensity is still set down at 2. So let's put this up at 50 and we'll put our brush at 100 again. And if we start at the top, we get a pretty neat effect. It reminds me a lot of dragging paint through water. It's pretty fun. So I can see how this would be a little more useful than maybe the others. Let's try it with this line. It just sort of smudges wherever your pen goes. You have to get far enough away from the point, otherwise it'll pick up that point shorten it. So make sure your brush doesn't cross that point. And then if you do that, you'll get a little more of a wavy line. Okay, now let's try it on the hello. Whoa. Okay, this probably isn't going to work very well with text because obviously it's no longer readable. But let's lessen the detail and lessen the intensity. So we'll put this back down to 20. Okay, a little more readable, still kind of weird. All right, now finally let's switch to the bloat tool. We'll select the rainbow, click on the bloat tool, and then I'm just going to slowly pull these pieces up. This might work a little better if our brush was a lot bigger, so I'm going to change that now. We'll put it at 250, and we'll increase the detail. So these tools, as you can see, they're good for abstracting, but not so much if you want something precise, because these are very um, hard to control and you're going to get different results every time you try to do something with them. So if the little crosshair starts up here, then your line is going to go like that. If it starts below the line, it's going to go up like this. All right, and now let's see how well it works on the hello. If I just tap once, I get kind of a cool effect. So that could be useful, an easy way to just um, manipulate the text quickly. But I'll be honest with you, these tools I very, very rarely use. The width tool I use all the time, but these seven underneath it, uh, it is really a rarity because I like my artwork to be precise. Now, not everybody wants their artwork to be precise, so these tools could work a lot better for you. But I hope this has given you some idea of how they're used. If you like this video, please click on the like button, and I'll see you next week for another graphic design tutorial. Thank you.